So Mackenzie Crook, uh, you can't imagine how delighted fans of Detectress were to find out that because Acorn, the streaming service, co-produced the third season, you're finally eligible for the Emmys. I mean, it's just such wonderful news. I mean, you've got a couple of BAFTAs for it, but what what would it mean to you to kind of have the the show sort of get an, some Emmy recognition? Well, just just to know, to be honest, that it's been found by some American viewers and it's got a, a following in America is is great for me, and that and that it you know that it's even being talked about as being eligible for an Emmy is, is, you know, beyond what I thought was possible with such a sort of a small, very British show. So the fact that it's traveled across the Atlantic um, is, yeah, more than I could have hoped for. Well, you know, it really is sort of the little engine that could because, you know, you say small British show and then really small. And I think you were on BBC Four uh, right. when you started. So not one, not two, not, I mean, and yet, you go to the BAFTAs and you win best scripted comedy. I mean, just yeah. that this little, I, as I was writing about, you know, about the show, you know, it's about detectorists. There are people that are use metal detectors to search for treasure. Um, do you get tired of people like me writing about it, calling it a hidden gem or, you know? Just... I, no, I love, I, I love that. I, um, I honestly think I, I've, I've read every word that has ever been written about Detectress. I wish I was cool enough to just be able to, um, to yeah, disregard uh, critics or what's written about it, but I can't, I'm afraid. I have to see what people have written. And, uh, and um, I, no, you know, the, the fact it was so, so well received, it, it, it did exactly what I hoped it was gonna do, reach, reach people, yeah. Well, and, and the thing about when you say read every word written about it, I mean, you wrote every word. Uh, you know, this is the, so not only do you, are you the star, uh, co-star with Toby Jones, who picked up a BAFTA a few months ago, I mean, you wrote it and then I, I never want to believe everything on IMDb, but did you direct every episode as well? Yes. Yeah, I did. And yeah, the, uh, that just came, in fact, that was Ricky Gervais's suggestion to me when I, when I told him I was writing it and then told him it looked like it was going to get made. He said, he said, and I assume you're directing it. And at that point, it hadn't occurred to me. But of course, you know, the idea of handing over this script that I'd poured so much love into, handing it over to someone else to direct, you know, became unthinkable. And so I thought, yeah, I'm going to give this a crack. And I'm glad I did. Yeah. So, so to that point about, so when you thought of this, a couple, you come up with the idea and then just take us through the process. Like, did it get, did a do they do like pilots? Do you get a pilot commissioned in England or do you get the order for the six episodes right away? Or I went to the BBC with the idea. Um, I'd, I'd written the pilot script and, and you know, I was in a very fortunate position. I, I already had a long relationship with the BBC through from the office and even before that. And so I was able to go in and see the commissioning editors and explain my idea. Um, and yeah, they gave us they gave us money to make a 10, a 10 minutes pilot scripts just basically two scenes um so i did the opening of, of episode one and and yeah on the on the back of that the the series was commissioned and then so toby jones on board like when did he come into it at the yeah relatively early on actually and 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 him coming on board of course was a great help in getting it commissioned i was able to go into the bbc and say this is who's interested and he also shaped shaped the way the the writing went as well I, I've, I've mentioned before that i imagined initially the character of lance is far more mercenary and and he was the treasure hunter whereas andy was the one that abided by the rules but when toby came on board it quickly became apparent that lance was a much wiser character and um and yeah they couldn't be chalk and cheese like that they had to have things in common and so yeah it informed the writing having toby on board well, it's interesting you say that because I sort of think about, uh, you know, from the very first episode and yeah, you're right. Even in that episode, he's Lance sort of changes and then certainly in the ones that are beyond that. The great thing about Acorn is that even though we're talking about the final season, which is six episodes, uh, is Emmy eligible. The great thing is people can binge, uh, they can see all 18 of the regular episodes and then that Christmas episode. So you do the six, and and I, I think it, it, I hope it exceeded even your expectations. I mean, it, the, it was so beloved. Um, how much pressure does that put on you then to do that when you're doing the next six? 
Yeah, when I when I did the first series, I honestly never thought beyond that six episodes. Um, I I imagined it was a self contained little story. I imagined the the tone and the pace of it would would yeah suit a a one series, and I didn't see how it could go any further. And then it went down so well, and I thought I I should I need to I need to try and do this again. And yeah, there was there was another story that came about. It was actually the third series that was more difficult, I suppose. Because, um, yeah, yeah, the, the idea of it getting boring terrified me. Well, you know, what's interesting about that is, I mean, because you sort of, so you do this, the next one, the uh, next season, six, six episodes. Um, and again, just, I mean, I don't want to underestimate, I mean, when you're writing, directing, and crafting these uh, episodes, how much work that must be, and that there, there's six little gems. So then you do a Christmas special. Um, but just, the, the, I, we, you know, the people, the, you were in the office, you mentioned that. I mean, it was two and done, right? Faulty Towers, two and done. So how reluctant were you to do a third season? Yeah, it was a big decision. I took a year out between the second and the third just to, just to collate ideas or, or even just think about whether I wanted to take it further or not. And it was, in fact, it was a song, a song by a band called The Unthanks, which I featured in the first episode of the third series called the magpie and somebody recommended i listen to this band i heard that song and the whole story of the magpie is stealing the gold and hoarding it above their heads rather than below the ground and it just it all started spilling out and and that's when i knew that i i had one more series in me and and that i needed to be brave and go for it you know and and do that third series well and speaking of brave even the like the sequence that said to the magpie i mean what i think what resonates with so many people, I mean, it's so heartwarming and there's, it's so sort of real. But I mean, you as the writer, you're not afraid of silences. You know, as the director, you don't need action all the time, that the words can speak louder than actions. Um, did you, you talked about the relationship with the BBC. I mean, are Emmy voters watching this, you know, that deal with the suits at the networks and get these script suggestions how hands-on or hands-off were the was the bbc while you were making these uh, different seasons yeah see this is almost embarrassing to say how easy it was and how trouble free the whole the whole show was to make it was it was such a joy i'm I mean, i'm sure i'm looking back on it in through slightly rose tinted glasses but the way i remember it there was no there, there were no barriers, no obstacles. The BBC understood immediately, Shay, you know, to his credit, Shane Allen at the BBC. I, I told him the idea, which, you know, doesn't jump off the page. But I told him about the silences I wanted, as you said, and, and that I didn't want to pack it with gags and, and there was going to be shots of nature in between. And he understood. And no, as I say, nobody tried to meddle with it. They, they just let us get on with it. And, and so we, we got to create exactly, exactly what we wanted. Yeah, it's uh, it's sort of quite embarrassingly pain-free the process. And then I think what will be painful for people here is how you do have a sort of a slight luxury of time, right? With British uh, television se series, I mean, how so? Your what was your shooting schedule for six episodes? Yeah, pretty much six weeks, a week per episode. Oh, okay. Well, then that's that's actually faster than I thought. I, I've spoken to some people who've done these half hours over there and it's more like two weeks and things. So, uh, right. no, um, yeah, we had, we had about a week per episode, maybe, a, maybe a week and a day per episode. Um, so season three, I mean, it, it's you, it's Toby Jones, it's Rachel Sterling, who is just beyond so, I mean, since Bletchley circle. I've been like enamored with her. Yeah. Um, I, we were, talking right before we came on air about uh, and different things. And, and uh, I was thinking of Doctor Who and Rachel and her mother were in a, a really landmark episode of Doctor Who, Diana Rigg, Dame Diana Rigg. Um, when you're coming up with the idea of season three, and Andy and Becky are coming home, and they're gonna have to live with her mother. Um, was it just, a, tell us about how Diana Rigg came into the project. Uh, well, um... It was so she first featured in in the in the second series and and it was just I think Rachel had told me that it was one of the few things that her mother had watched her in that 
she actually said that she enjoyed. Usually, usually she's very critical of, of Rachel's work. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn by saying that, but I think this is the case that that she was she was very enthusiastic about Detectress, and and I think it might have even come. The suggestion had come from her or Rachel, and it, so yeah, that was a no-brainer to write her in um, into the, in uh, as the mother-in-law. But I was keen not to make her the stereotypical battle axe mother-in-law right. and, and I, you know, I wanted Andy and her to get on quite well, despite the, the, the um, irritations on the surface that, that deep down they had a, a, a respect for each other. And yeah, it was wonderful performing with her, getting her on board. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, right, right now she's in, uh, on Broadway, uh, just got a Tony nomination for playing Henry Higgins's mother in uh, my fair lady. I mean, really, this is an actress that can do, you know, everything from, I, I, were you like me and that you watched reruns of the Avengers when you were young and, and her? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what I love about her character is Emma Peel, that the idea was that they were trying to replace an actress who was going to be leaving and they were looking for somebody with sex appeal and they the script looked, said, we need to find somebody with M appeal. And that's how her character got named. Um, and, and she, she still has it, right? I mean, yeah, so so you're writing the words she's speaking and all your characters, and then you're directing them. To, I'm so curious about how, do you as the director ever sort of, or the actor, want the writer to rewrite something? Uh, do you mean on the day when, when we're actually yeah. there? Yeah. Well, I mean I'm I'm not I'm not very precious about the words and and they are changing right up until shooting you know and if if an actor has a better a, a suggestion for how they think the line should go then then I'm all for for hearing those and changing them around so yeah it's a it's a evolutionary process it's always evolving the script so you sort of broke with convention like by doing that third uh, I think in England you call them series in America we say seasons yeah. um Every people want to know. I mean, uh, is there a bit? Is there life for detectorists beyond? Is there something more that we can maybe look forward to? I I think that's it for detectorists. I really do. I, I I've, I'm so proud of the three series. The way they sit together. Um, I don't want to carry on having the same search and almost getting it. Not quite. You know. I'm happy to leave Lance and Andy there and in a happy place. And I'm looking forward to going off and writing and directing other stuff. It's, it's really inspired me. I, I found a discipline and a work ethic that I've been looking for for, you know, decades. And suddenly I found it and suddenly I realized I can do it. It's given me a confidence. And so, yeah, I'm sort of brimming with ideas. It's an exciting time. So what about you mentioned the, the first part of the writing process, I, how, have you become disciplined or like, do you have a set schedule for the writing or? Yes, yeah, as I say, for years I've wanted to be a writer, but but without the, uh, as I say, the discipline to, to get it done. And I've, I've tried looking for writing partners um, and never quite worked out the dynamic of the partnership. But I guess with Detectorists, it was, it was a project that I was so into, I could see it so clearly that I managed to get it done. And now, I, yeah, I have a, I, I work office hours. I go into my office and I work from nine until five and, and I love it. I absolutely adore it. Had you, when you created it, I mean, were you very, you sort of thought I'm going to be Andy? I mean, did you sort of from pay, so when you're going forward and thinking about other things you're gonna write, I mean, would there be, are you interested in writing things in which you may not appear or would just have a supporting role or a guest? Yes, kind of yeah, I'm very interested in that. I mean, much as I adored the whole process of, of making Detectorist, it was sometimes, I, I, I enjoyed directing the scenes that I wasn't acting in better because then I could concentrate fully. And so, yeah, I, I would very much like to direct something that I'm, that I'm not central acting in. Um, but at the moment, I can't imagine directing anybody else's script. I'm not able to visualize anybody else's writing as clearly in my head as I feel I need to to direct it. So at the moment, I can only imagine directing stuff that I've written. Hopefully that will change as I mature. <laughs> and so you, what you were saying about the directing scenes in which you're not in, so the ones that you are in, and obviously Andy's a central figure, I mean, was it sort of, did you, were you able to sort of go 
finish the scene and look at it right away and and then kind of tweak it and uh... yeah I, I i mean i said to my producer adam tandy on the first two series and jill isles on the third i asked them to 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 give me notes on my acting if they thought that you know there was something that i couldn't see in my own performance uh, then they would give me notes um but yeah i would go and look at the monitor in between shots or at the beginning or end of a sequence and uh yeah yeah what what uh, we mentioned the BAFTAs, and I, I just I just really feel the need to highlight because we do at Gold Derby we write about all awards, including the BAFTAs. The the Emmys are pretty generous, you know, in terms of there'll be seven or eight shows, a half dozen performers, if not more, in every category, lots and lots of categories. I mean, to get this show it, nominations alone at the BAFTAs is an achievement, but then to win it, there's only four in any given category, and so for the show to have won, and then for Toby then to have won uh, just recently, I, I, you're really to be commended because it's 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 not easy. The BAFTAs, uh, it's a yeah. Thank you. It was it was really it was a heartwarming experience because yeah, it didn't get an, uh, didn't get millions of viewers. You know, on average, it was sort of half a million. But those people that did watch it t really took it to their hearts, and. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's great to think that a, a small show like that about a niche subject can be recognized uh, with, with awards. Yeah. And, and that, again, just bringing it back to Acorn, and that's what's so wonderful about the fact that it's on a streaming service in America, because then it, it's available anytime. It's sort of on demand. And so really, I hope that anyone that's sort of looking at it it's worth investing the hours in to watch the, the 19. I mean, it's just sort of think of it as like sort of a long, long film because it's just, the story is just carries you along. I really, I, I can't, obviously I, I, I can't say enough about it. It's, it's, it's just one of my favorites. So listen, best of luck um, with the Emmys. And I just, I'm so thrilled that you're just on the ballot that it gave us a chance to talk to you. Thank you, Paul. It's really good to talk to you. Thanks for your support. Bye-bye. Yes.